one timeout left. And by throwing on that down, they left open the possibility that they could run on the next two plays. Seattle. Right? There was some logic in there. Yeah. Some. Yeah, yeah. Some. However little there was, <laughs> there was some. Okay? This? What was the logic on this play? Snapping it? Mike and Woburn, what was the logic on that play? I'm trying to figure it out. I, I really am. Can I just make one point? Do you guys remember the score to the Buck Fumble game? Uh, it was like 45 to 7. Do you do you, know, you can't recall it exactly? Though, Fifty-two right? to ten, something like that. Yes. Yeah. All right. But you remember the play. The play will live on in infamy. This Correct. is a gift that will will give on for for decades. It's, That's right. It's just so excellent to see a self-inflicted uh, catastrophe that has become just an internet sensation, and with all the different you know like memes and stuff that comes with it, this is so much more entertaining than if they just blew the team out by fifty and, and that was it. I'm trying to figure out how that play was supposed to work. You know, <laughs> that's, that's what, what I keep asking. Yeah. Now you guys have, have solved a, a part of the riddle because it, it should have been a, a snap, you know, a, a shotgun snap. Because unless those, unless the people on the line, the defenders, count to like three Mississippi, it's <laughs> nailed every time. It's just it's not working. You can't, you can't take a direct snap from center without guards. <laughs> like you just can't like, do that right, with three guys. To get It's just right. guys on the other side. The geometry yeah. doesn't make sense. That's right. You've got McAfee, 10 yards backwards. That would, have, that would have to be the greatest snap in the history of mankind if you're going to get the ball from him. Now, now, listen, seriously, are they trying to use the whole you can't can the snapper on on a punt and or a kick rule? Oh, interesting. So that, so that the, the snapper gets a free rule. You can't line up. Line. You can't line up o o over the center, and the center in this case would have been an eligible receiver, Mike, because he's at the end of the line of scrimmage, and it happened to be a backup receiver. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so if if you know Pagano, you know wasn't as you uh, you know snout deep in in Ursay's medicine cabinet, <laughs> he might have said, "Hey, they're covering it." You know, <laughs> they're they're camp they're covering the, the the snapper, and he's an eligible receiver. Where's the? Fl I mean, I I thought it was some like you know type of, uh, you know, like trap to get a, a free flag, you know, like uh, there's no way. Well, so that's, that's an interesting work. theory. But no it's play that works whatsoever without some type of uh, of legal chicanery. I just think there's, it, there's just the way to explain it. Well, he has to be a shotgun, right? <laughs> you, have to, you can't direct snap without guards. Because again, the geometry of it, you just can't. <laughs> So, so, the first thing first, he has to be in shotgun, all right? But the whole thing about the center going out for a pass, I, I think might be part of it. Because he provided that the whole right side of the offensive line that was off the line of scrimmage was actually on the line of scrimmage. You know, again, when the ref says the entire right side of the offensive line was illegal, illegal formation, you just don't see that every day. But presuming they were, in, they were on the line of scrimmage, the center is an eligible receiver. The center is an eligible receiver because he's at the end of the line. And can you then dovetail into that new rule where you can't line up directly over the center on special teams? So he gets a free release. <laughs> and so Schmucky gets to throw to Bucky on a on a clean release, and you can't chuck him at the line of scrimmage. I, I had not even considered the snap to McAfee. <laughs> What a great concept! Let, let, let's snap it diagonal. Like twenty yards. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Maz, Maz is losing it. <laughs> second worst punt attempt of the entire weekend. Michigan. We'll get to that right after these words. Radio.com. Listen to the Sports Hub on your smartphone. Download the Radio.com app at the iTunes and Google Play stores. Now, here's the 97.5 and 
98.5 Sports Hub headlines. Just so you know, for those not watching on the uh, on the on the simulcast, Maz was bright red and crying while he was laughing there. Uh, injury suffered in last night's 34-27 Patriots win over the Colts by starting left tackle Marcus Cannon. Uh, he went out with a toe. Defensive end Jabal Sheard. He left with an ankle. Thankfully, both considered minor. That according to Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network. Now, Mike Giardi of Comcast Sportsnet New England also reporting that LeGarrette Blunt required x-rays today on an unspecified injury. Still have no word on the status of Matthew Slater, who left with a knee injury that uh, was reportedly uh, looked like it was pretty serious. Next up for the Patriots, though, they're going to be hosting the 4-1 New York Jets. Sunday afternoon, Gillette Stadium, kickoff 1 o'clock. Now, uh, week 6 wraps up tonight with the Eagles hosting the Giants. Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. dealing with a hamstring injury is expected to play. Back to the Jets for a moment when their wide receivers, Quincy Inunua, suspended without pay for four games for violating the NFL personal conduct policies. The Jets' third wide receiver has actually played 50% of the offensive snaps for the Jets this year. Titans quarterback Marcus Mariota, who took a low hit in his knee in Tennessee's loss to Miami yesterday, diagnosed with a sprained MCL. ALCS game 3 tonight, Toronto Blue Jays down 2-0. That's all. And Boston Celtics host the Brooklyn Nets tonight at TD Garden. That's all you need to know. Maz lost it. It was hysterical. Love it. Love it. Love it.